Hey, welcome to Level Pixel Level, and welcome to part 3 in my rigging node tutorial series. In this series, we're just going to rig a simple asset. We're just going to add three bones, three joints, give them all control shapes, and then attach the pieces of geometry to those shapes. First, make sure you have rigging nodes installed. I'll leave a link to the add-on in the description below. So it's a pretty simple asset. It just has three pieces here. There's this lid, this bottom piece, and this center. This would be an easy rig to make by hand. I'm just using it as an example to show how you would use it with rigging nodes. Okay, so to build it with rigging nodes, the first thing I'm gonna do is flip to the rigging nodes panel here at the bottom, and I'll just drag this up. I'm just gonna click new. I'm going to add an input input armature here, and I'm gonna add a new armature. I'm gonna add an input here, and that's the name. I wanna name this right off the bat, just to create a rig. What I like to do first as well is just to add a flow control execute node, just to get the end of my node tree ready to go, and I'll do set preview. Now I have my create rig right here ready to go, and I'm gonna edit it and add a couple more bones. So in here, I'm gonna click on this little pencil icon to edit it. And I'll just put this bone in world space. And I'm just gonna duplicate it up. And then I'll duplicate it one more time over for the hinge over here. Yep, that looks good right there. Okay, so now I'm going to do a couple things with the loop node. I'm just gonna fix the rotation order on all of these joints. So I'm going to add a loop a loop node here. I'm going to add a new one and I'm going to dive into the loop node now and just move the group output to the group input and the loop index over here. I'm going to add a bone and I'm going to add a set bone property. And if I drag the armature back to here and forwards to here, that opens up a new input and output in my main node. You can just sort of see it in the background here. I'm going to flip this to pose mode and I want to add an input my rotation mode. I'll click OK, and I'm going to set this to XYZ Euler. If I hit Tab, I exit this view, and I just want to connect the armature to the out and the armature to the in as well. This is going to break, actually, as soon as I do Set Preview, because I need to increase the end index to 3. And inside the loop, I need to actually input the bone. But we're going to do this dynamically. So I'm going to add an armature, Get Bones node, and plug the object into it. And then I'm going to add another node as well from the array category. So from array, I'm going to add get. This is going to get a bone. So it's tough to see, but it's got this empty input right there. I want to plug my list into it. That's what the get bones node does. It actually just gets all the joints or bones in the rig and puts them into a string array. I'm going to get my loop index and plug it into my index. And then this can just get plugged into the bone. Now if I come out of here and do set preview, it's going to work. And I've looped through all my joints and set the XYZ Euler. So this is great. If I ever come back to here and for some reason I have to add more joints, I know that when I set preview, it's going to update. Although in this case, these three still have it, but this one down here, these are still quaternion because I'm manually inputting my in end index here. Let's make this a little bit smarter. Let's add another armature, get bones. I'll plug my rig into it. And I'm just going to add from array, I'm going to add a length node. That's going to get the length of my joints in terms of the number. And I'll plug that into the end index, do set preview, and now these all have that update. So I like to have this as my loop node as I work forward. Um, I'll add anything I want to do to all the joints inside of here. But let's move along. I'm going to come back here and just delete those extra bones I added. And let's fix up the parenting. So I just want to parent these with a node as well too. So I'm going to go to bone, I'm going to set bone property, and the property I'm going to set this time is on the edit, not the pose of the bone. So make sure that this is on edit, and I'm going to add an input, and I'm going to add a parent. I'm going to click OK. These are just called bone and bone 1, 2. I'm actually going to flip back to here, click on edit, and just name these really quick. So this one I'm going to call root. This one I'm just going to call item. And this one I'm just going to call lid. Back over here, you'll notice that it says bone and 0102. I just need to set the preview, and it will update those names. So I want to update the lid to be the parent of the root. And I'm just going to duplicate this over. And I want the item to also be parented to the root. So now if I set preview and come in here, 
I can move that freely, I can move that freely, and that's parented to both. All right, let's keep going. Let's add some shapes. So in 3D view, I still need to make these dynamically. I'm just gonna add a circle, drag this over. I'm just gonna duplicate this over, and I'm gonna make a square. Usually to make a square, I'll just select uh, four nodes like that, do control I, hit delete, and dissolve vertex. And I'm just gonna duplicate this over again and just make it a little bit um, skinnier like that. So I'm just gonna name these really quick. This is just gonna be shape item. It's gonna be shape root. And this is just gonna be shape lid. Just to make it easier to find later on. Okay, so let's add these shapes dynamically with the nodes. So I'm gonna add a bone and I'm going to do a set bone property and I'm gonna set the pose bone. I'm gonna add input custom object and click OK. And the custom object is going to be my shape root and that's gonna look at the root. Whoops, that's gonna look at the root. Cool, so that's done. Again, I can just duplicate this node over if I just wanna sort of get all three bones with their shapes. So this one, I wanna do the lid and I want it to be the shape lid. This one, I'm gonna do the item and I want it to be shape item. I like the way the root and the lid are working, but the shape on the item here is just a bit too big. So I'm gonna add another input here and that's gonna be the custom shape scale. I'll click okay and I'll just make this one Maybe 0.5, let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's looking better, maybe 0.25. That's too small. 0.4 looks perfect. All right, so that's my rig. I just have to do one more thing and that's parent these pieces up. So I have this selected, I'm just gonna shift click on this, just do control P with the bone. I'll click on the lid, click back on the rig, click on the lid joint, do control P bone. And I'll just do the uh, little item energy block thing in the middle, and I'll do bone. And now this rig is done. What's interesting is it actually maintains the parent connection. So these three pieces, even if I do set preview, will stay connected to the rig. So it does maintain that information and keeps it. So you don't have to worry about losing that even as you're working on this. It will remove any posing data on the rig though. So just watch that and make sure that if you are doing that, you're not playing around with your nodes. You're using your nodes to build your rig and then you're animating as a separate uh, pass. So this was just to show you how you would rig a simple asset with rigging nodes. This might've taken longer than just doing it by hand. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna look at a more advanced system and as to why this might be faster in the long run. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Big thank you to my patrons for supporting me in this video. It's because of them that I can continue to make these videos. Head on over there if you want early access, exclusive content, and even some behind the scenes. I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.